Hello. Hello. How's everyone doing? And how are you? I'm fine. Absolutely fine. How are you? Sorry, his, his color changed. <laughs> yeah, that, that usually happens. That happens for me as well when, um, when it's like the first name that pops up or the first uh, first time that name pops up. Usually the second message is a different color. Fair. I don't understand why, but that is the case. I'm guessing that's only for the people that don't have a color chosen though, right? No, he has it. He definitely has a color chosen. Yeah. Everybody has it. That's weird. Yeah. Spoder. Squish. Squish. Spoder. Spoder. Get the people over, I guess. <laughs> it didn't look like it on the screen, but I could no, feel, feel his hand bobbing up it didn't now. actually register the vibration <laughs> of my hand. And, and an owl. owl. Wow. You get the owl. I can do the owl. But it won't be on the screen. I was going to say, on top of the cap instead I of on top of the Yeah, I was going to say, I can't actually bend down. Because there's a corset in the way. You can turn. <laughs> you can put your, your chair down, technically. Which you wouldn't like, but you could. There we go. I'm all the way back here now. But yeah. I'm in camera. You were already behind me beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> You're even further. So to do our streams where we look like we're about the same height, he tends to just sit back a little bit. because if I... Yeah, so normally I would sit like this. Which is like a bit behind me. Which like is... If I go straight across, yeah. <laughs> he's still not. And then, yeah, like... If you go straight across, yes, there's still space. Yes, so he's he's behind me, which is also why I have to look behind me. I'm basically uh, with my arm on her backrest, so <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> and especially with the corset, you can't. Yeah. Fuck. yeah no. <laughs> You can't really sit. You can't squish. Slumped. Yes. <laughs> but I don't want to squish, because then you can see into my ears. <laughs> oh, that's, my, that's my point. You can't squish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sippy, sippy. See, this is why I said the same thing. Okay. Very blue. Ah, Smurf gun. Very blue. <laughs> But nobody actually, well, Dragon Wolf said it. Yeah. Yeah, no. The, yeah. Um, yes. Great. It is actually really nice. Um, I know you don't like Monster because you think it's too sweet, which is a shame, yeah. but understandable, I guess. Uh, but this one is really nice. It's. Um, you say it's a shame, I would say it's good for you. Yeah, <laughs> it's a healthy choice. <laughs> yeah, but you can't like... Converse it, yeah. about something you don't like because you don't know what it tastes like. That's fair. Properly. You don't know what it tastes like to us. I mean, he has tried it. He yeah. just doesn't like the taste as is, which is fine. I should have warned him better about the green one, though. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, he yeeted to the kitchen for that. He yacked it. <laughs> yes. I did say it was different than the white one. Yes. And it very much is. Yes. This one is too. This is also more acidic. Yes. Acidic is definitely a good word for it because it is. I'm pretty sure there is citric acid in there. So there, there is definitely a sour yeah. tinge. Now, my Polish is not that good. <laughs> you could check on the green one. I have one of those that isn't. Yeah, but that is different. Still kind of want to try the real sugar variant of the white can. I wonder if that will be sweeter than the zero sugar one. Actually, there is no regular of the white one. There is citric acid in it. Yes, I know. Because uh, citrian, uh, citriniani sodu is uh, probably citric acid something. Fair. We could check later on the green can. Because that came from a different place, so it should have English on it. Uh, but yeah, there's no regular nope. one for white. I think the closest you would get is to just get a regular monster, like the original. But that isn't close to the flavor. But no. It is the, the closest you will get to the normal flavor. So, 
basically white and any other ultra is uh, sugar free. But uh, there is no normal version of the ultra because it's like base ultra. It has no other name. Just like base monster doesn't have any other name. And they are not similar. <laughs> no, they aren't. No. Then there's also not a crossover for every single flavor. No. Like this one doesn't have a crossover into regular. Um, there is another blue one. There's another blue one. There's plenty of blue ones. But most of those are a different flavor. You have the Fiesta Blue. The Fie Ultra, Ultra Fiesta. That's the Mango Loco. Which is the Mango Ultra Loco version. Ultra version. Yes. Yeah. So there's a few regular flavors that got an Ultra one. But there aren't that many Ultra flavors that have a regular one. Right. I would probably, if it were there, I would probably prefer the sugar version of Ultra Green, Ultra Paradise. Mm. But it doesn't exist. No. Because in my opinion, the sugar version is probably better because of the rest of the chemicals to make it sweet. I drink too much uh, zero to be bothered by that. I drink Coke zero because apple prefers the taste. I mean, I do too by now. I used to not, but I prefer it now. It's a little quiet in chat today. It is a little quiet. You want to start with the summary? I can start, certainly. I, I can't bend forward. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything moves except for everything from here and up. Squish. There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing here. Everything is secured. It's so weird. That's the point of a course it Yes, is. but it feels weird. <laughs> In the first stream for Relic, we started out with a meeting between Zenith, Delira, and Idas, as they all had a different purpose on the archaeological dig site. Delira was looking uh, through her heritage of the nymphs uh, that had lived there before. Zenith was exploring, and Idas was scavenging for parts. As they uncovered something new, a multitude of creatures escaped uh, their confinement, and after some struggle, they managed to capture two of them. Uh, Two of them again with a mysterious stone. This is also where Lachlan appeared, helping the women out by playing a magical tune to keep the creatures subdued. Lastly, they found a stone tablet that, uh, that told them that the creatures had been imps. So, uh, missing some tools, I just pulled the group along uh, with her to go to her workshop. So, everybody caught up, caught up and ready. <laughs> I wonder how delayed the camera is for the people because here it is actually a little slow yeah uh, that's a good question actually um, is the camera slow like if I move do you see movement or do you see still images popping in and out I mean, for the story it won't matter that much no, it's long but... enough on one screen but I do wonder if it's spoken if it's for these moments then I know to move less <laughs> difficult tasks <laughs> just become a vibrating juror Baymax in the car <laughs> yeah. well it's slow kind of like motion blur if that makes sense yes that does make sense movement okay. is visible it's slow okay all right and I wonder if we should just jump in or wait for a little bit until people are actually here. I expected more people to be here. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's monster. <laughs> yes. I mean, people can just walk back, so I might as well start. That is true. It's a little sad when they come in like halfway through them. What is it, 10 past? Yeah. Let's give them five minutes. Okay. So we have the, the people have, oh, I'm so far back. The people have um, another on. five minutes to uh, pop in and then we start. Fair. 
Well, so, Drag Move, did you already start the challenge for Mr. Orfeo? Hell yeah. Make a deck. He's right there. Show. Sure. And like you said, Everyone else did you also uh, watch back the last one? And there there you go. Mr. Orfeo, the builder. I'm really good at this camera thing. It's fine. Not yet. Well, get on it. I already have half a deck. Watch back the last week. Good. That's not How'd you like it? I have, I have this much for it. So it's, it's like a very tiny thing. Yes, but it is sleeved, so it's actually a lot less than what it looks. Like 25. Yeah. 15. <laughs> It's 15, 17. <laughs> Including your commander, so 16. Yeah. 16 out of 99. Nice. Last stream was quite nice. I invited to the next few chapters to reveal themselves. I'm very curious Second. to how people are going to view it. That is one person I really want to have to be here, by the way. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I can message them. Yeah, That's maybe, right. maybe proud some people. Will you talk to Dragon Wolf? <laughs> Keep him busy. <laughs> <laughs> Crap, I gotta talk. I know how to do the streaming thing. <laughs> Not streaming for too long. Two months. Three months. I think longer, yeah. I think three. three months. <laughs> You're asking a difficult question to probably keep to start talking. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> but yeah, there are some people that uh that should be here. Um and they are not yet. So I actually have a fun cool little story uh, of what I did yesterday. I was, um, I went to, to Frog Frenzy and uh, I got myself a PS5. Nice. Yeah. I know talk, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> of him or did you get it in? Uh, so he got a second one um, because of communication within his family uh, went a little bit no <laughs> so uh, he got a second one and he was like well we don't need a second one and um, so he asked me he was like yo you want a, you want a PS5 yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure um, so that was fun nice. I, uh, I went uh, traveling through the country to get a PS5 <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was closer than this. Um, maybe not as the same amount of time, because or maybe not less time, but it's closer for sure. Hamilton. Yeah. I. It's a different direction. Yeah, in one line, it is closer to where I live, but. This actually goes in one line. No, yeah, that's well, not today. <laughs> not today. The past three weeks have been issues with uh, public transport. Um, <laughs> you child. <laughs> <sighs> However, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I got a, I got a PS Five. It's 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 super super cool. Um, no, I think I know what you were doing yesterday. You mentioned you were busy with two things at once. <laughs> yep. yep. I was trying to set up a PS5. Um, I have the uh, the PS5 bundle, which has the Horizon Forbidden West code in it. And I downloaded that game. Uh... It is 99 gigabytes for that game. That's insane. And um, it is done. Oh. Yes, it is actually done. I left it overnight because when I looked uh, first, it says, oh, 
you're at seven percent. You need another eight hours of downloading. So that was fun. And then I um, I looked later, and uh, I saw that it was at eleven percent. And it says, oh, you need another forty eight hours. <laughs> But by the time this morning, I quickly checked if it was done with, I don't know when it finished, but somewhere in the night. So yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. But I'm likely going to play some, uh, um, some Demon Souls on that. Uh, the Demon Souls remastered. That's going to be cool. And, um, I don't remember what the, other game was came out three days ago. I think it's like Thyseria or something. That is uh, also like a Souls like. It's um. You gonna stream them when you can? Uh yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll probably play Demon Souls on my own first because with a Dark Souls game, I or Souls game, any from soft game, <laughs> I tend to start it, figure out how it actually works and how it plays and then go into streaming it mm -hmm. um which i still want to do for elden ring as well yeah. um but yeah that's uh those are uh, two games that i would like on it uh ratchet and clack rift apart is going to be cool um i got a, a, a list of things on my wish list right now for games to to, to get Fair enough. It's nice that it has um, backwards compatibility with PS4. That's nice. kind of cool. So you can actually download or buy PS4 games directly on the system. When I had the, the code for Horizon, it actually gave me both games, both for PS5 and PS4. Uh, I'd only downloaded the PS5 one. Uh, and it still took way too long. <laughs> It's fun, though. Yeah. I'm really excited for it. Does that mean you now have two controllers to use? Uh, no. <laughs> because one is a PS4 controller and one is a PS5 controller. I thought maybe they were compatible. Could nope. have been. <laughs> <laughs> I technically have a second controller, but I don't know if it actually functions on my PS4. I think it does. But then I would have to plug in the PS4, because I don't have a PS5 controller extra. Fair. Which I probably still want to buy at some point. But... Mostly thinking about unwrapping. Yeah. But technically, we could play that on the computer. Either computer. I can open my Steam library on yours. It really doesn't change much. Much it's a tiny game, so even if yeah. you come by and we do end up wanting to, you could definitely play it there. That works. That could also work. But then you need two controllers for your computer. Yeah. Which is significantly easier because I have two. Yes, I also have two. Although I have one that works on USB and the other one on Bluetooth because I have a laptop and it definitely has Bluetooth. I have uh, both on Bluetooth. Nice. And I still play through cable because I don't use the batteries for it. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I actually have a cable that connects my uh, Xbox controller to my computer that is on Bluetooth. I probably should have, but I don't know if I do. It's just a micro USB to USB A. Yeah, but I don't have all that much micro anymore. I used to for my phones, but I don't have those anymore. Yeah, usually uh, headsets or headphones or cables like that or uh, oh, yeah, peripherals like that. Because my headphones charge on that as well. Yeah. True. The PS5 and the Switch are both use USB-C, so that's cool. Nice. Well, technically time's up. Yeah, we waited long enough. A little sad they're not here. Well, they might come in. True, but then they're missing a part of the story. Well, that's their problem. That's also their fault. Yeah. It should have been you. True. Let's go! I hate it when you're right. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Every now and then. Well, that's... Uh, I don't know.
Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, no, that's it, I think. Okay. Chapter 4. Just before dawn, Zenith got up from her spot on the grass. She walked away a little bit, but close enough to see the others. She pushed out her wings, and when they were shut, uh, when they were shut, the wings were slightly bigger than her back. But when she opened them, they still looked impressive. She opened them as wide as she could, then she pulled them shut again, stretched them all the way back and tucked them back in. The sun slowly rose over the hill as she continued her stretches. The warmth hitting her wings felt comforting. As her hands were idle during her stretching, she used the time to also braid her long blonde hair into a thick braid that lay across her shoulder. Do that often? He had gotten up without her noticing. I try to do it every few days, especially if I haven't flown the day before. To be honest, I should be practicing landing more. I'd love to be able to fly. Not the cold wind to caress your face. It must be nice. Oh, it's so very free, but it takes a lot of practice. I've only seen others. Uh, I've seen others carry people, but my wings are smaller than most of my people. It's always been a little difficult to learn. Well, it shouldn't get you down. You still learn. You might not be great at landing, but you keep trying. Zenith hadn't noticed the others were up too. Slowly, she closed her wings again and gave the Lyra a small smile and a quiet nod. Flying is fun. I might be able to glide in the air. It rules. Oh, oh, right. Sorry. It's not a problem. I may not have wings to help me through the air, but I have magic to get me around. Lachlan snapped his fingers. The Lyra was first to start putting away her bedroom. What can you do with your magic? Can, can you show us something? Many different things, actually. To get around, I can teleport short distances. I've cost of a lot of energy. Because of this ring on my finger, I restore that energy quite quickly. Zenith looked at the ring he showed. It was a slender silver band with a stone embedded into it. That's really pretty. This ring was gifted to me by my mentor. It increases the body's restorative powers and amplifies the winner's magical prowess. Shall we get going soon? Otherwise, we won't even make it today. Uh, we can talk more during travel. Zenith pushed herself off the floor and flew a little circle. I've been ready for hours. The Lyra had already put her things away. Are you ready to? She put her bag on her back. Hours? Did you not sleep at all? Lachlan furled her brow at Zenith. I took my rest. I don't need much. Go cool. on. Everyone is backed up and ready. Let's go, crew. With a spring in her step, Idas took the lead. Idas took the lead again. Zenith would fly some parts of the way and walk parts of the way, but she never strayed far from her new friends. As they got closer and closer to the village, Zenith seemed excited about it. They started seeing signs of destruction here and there: signposts ripped out of the floor, markers broken or cracked. I think we're going in the right direction, on two accounts. The Lyra said when they passed a cracked wooden marker. The others silently agreed. As they entered the, new ta- uh, entered the town, more destruction was seen all around them. Nothing major, but they found smashed pots, broken plates, and glass. Looks like we missed one hell of a party. I hope no one was hurt. Zenith picked up a piece of pottery. Not many people were out, despite it being the middle of the day. No kidding, we missed a party. My hometown has been ravished. Ida slowly walked towards a broken sign. In the distance, they could hear a ruckus, an indistinct noise coming from further into town. That must be the townsfolk. No time to waste. Let's see how they're doing. Idas ran forward. As they came closer to the uh, chatter became louder, and it became clear they were looking for Idas. What happened here? Zenith arrived first, carried by her wings. Some crazy gremlins came flying in by a storm. Never seen anything like it. Destroy half me parts, they did. An old man responded, shaking his fist in the air. They also put the train out of commission. Several mechanics are already on the job, but the, uh, but the owner of this workshop is handy with that magical tech. Mido, there you are. We need your help. The woman stood, uh, stood closest to the big double door of the workshop, like she had been just knocking on it. We cannot ask for more imagineers from the city merit when the trains won't go. Can you help us? Sure can. If I could get to my front doors, I'll be needing some tools, you know. Idas walked forward and tried to squeeze through the crowd. It soon became clear to the others that the crowd hadn't gathered for Idas, but for the lady that spoke. 
She seemed to have a lot of sway in the town. As Ida's went, Ida's went inside, followed closely by the others, they heard the woman speak to the crowd, calming them down, promising repairs would be on their way soon. That's the mayor of the city, but you won't need me to tell you that. She likes that fact way too much to uh, have it go unnoticed. Anyway, I got my thing about Robs. You guys want to join me to see the train? Idas looked at Zenith, Delira, and Lachlan, who had followed her into the shop. Zenith immediately nodded furiously, squeezing through the crowd once more after locking the door behind them, and off they went to the train. A flock of people were following them to the station, to be the first to board when the repairs would be finished. When they all arrived at the train, they could immediately see what, what, what was wrong. It was laying slanted in a room. They remembered Ida's motion, uh, mentioning that they, uh, they were to float over the rails inside, but this one was laying down. You can fix that? Oh yeah, no problem. I always uh, already know how to do how to. Already know how to. Just need to not mess up. Ida's walked towards the bottom side of the slanted caboose and grabbed a funnel looking object from her freshly stocked pouch. So with a, so with a new air crystal we can charge these ones back up, she said to another worker. It's actually a good thing that you guys didn't already put it back on the tracks yet. Now I can reach easier. Yeah, we were told to wait no. We were told to wait for you. So we did. We get paid by the hour anyway. When I does uh, received the crystal, she quickly returned to the yellow green specks, faintly glowing in the sooted metal. Mm, lazy good for nothing people, all of them. Leave it to the freelancer to fix their problems while they sit around, do nothing, and still get paid. Ugh. Idas was talking to herself out of earshot of everyone else, except Zenith, who was curiously looking over Idas' shoulder. What will that thingy do? Uh, will they pay you, f uh, pay for you too? This little doohickey will take the energy from the big crystal and move it to the other, so we can charge them again. Also, yeah, even when I'm the one working, they all still get their payment for being act asked for it. I also get my money, of course. Otherwise, I'd be out of business in a flash. But they already, uh, they, mm, but I actually have to work for it. Ida slowly moved along the train's underside, cha charging all of the magical shards. When she was done, she walked to the person in charge. All the shards have been properly charged up. Your men can set the train back on its tracks, right? Absolutely. Where would we be without a mayor in the vicinity? We should give you a contract. The man laughed from behind his bushy mustache. Hmm. I'd rather contract something else. Your payment shall be in the mail shortly, I'm sure. I'll tell the mayor about your work. The man in charge gave Adas a firm handshake and walked towards his crew. Idas pulled Zenith away from the train and back to the other two. Zenith had an incredulous look on her face as the workers began to put the train back where it was supposed to be, and it started floating just above the tracks. That's really amazing. You did that. Well done. Nah, it wasn't me. It's ra science, magic. It's what Imagineer lives for. Idas waved the praise away nonchalantly before starting to blush slightly. So... Do you know how this happened? Was the imps doing? I'm not sure, but it would be—it uh, could be coincidental, or imps can drain magic crystals somehow. What happened was the caboose on the back of the train ran out of magic power and started skidding along the tracks, which made the train lose its course. It seems too co coincidental, don't you think? I could fly around the town about twice as fast as you guys could be while walking. I can look if they're still here. If I go from your workshop out, I will find my way back. That seems like a great plan. If there is even if there is, uh, is even one, we need to capture it. The little group went back to Ida's workshop, and as soon as they got there, Zenith took the disguise. I'll be back as soon as I find something. The others waved at her as she set out. Zenith comfortably flew across the little town. She went east first. Having, uh, waving at some people that would look up when her shadow passed over them. No one was shocked to see someone flying, which she was happy about. It meant there were no prying eyes. Bending off to the south, she went all the way around the town in a large circle. When she reached the northernmost side, she saw two shadows flickering towards some people on the outskirts of town. She didn't have the stone on her, so she went back to Ida's workshop and quickly, as quickly as she could. 
north. And there's at least two north to the north. She panted when she touched down. But we must make haste. Lachlan jumped up from his chair. Yeah, we gotta make a break for it if we are to catch up to those things. Unable to fly so soon with her two small wings, Zenith led the way on foot. Using different co- muscles compared to flying was the less tiring option. This way, she kept muttering as she ran through, uh, through the streets of the village. Let's hope they're still there. When they got closer to where Zenith had so- seen the shadows, they heard a shriek. I think they are. The Lyra answered her own statement as they rounded another corner. A creature was batting at the air around them. Hair that covered their entire body was being pulled in different directions. And bags slung across their shoulder was being pulled by invisible hands as well. They could clearly see the shadows of the imps, even though the creatures themselves were invisible. Leave this person alone, vile creatures. What are you waiting for? Capture them! Aidas fumbled around in her pouch, trying to find the stone. But since it was recently restocked for the train repair, she couldn't find it. I'm trying! I know it's in here somewhere! Her entire arm vanished into the pack. Zenith rushed forward, feeling the distinct need to help, but unable to do more than bat at invisible hands. She could feel those hands pull at one of her wings. The sensitive membrane was the one thing she didn't like having touched. A low, a low growl came from her as she turned quickly on her heels and snatched at, in, at the air, where she could feel a presence. It uh, took only that swipe, her fingers locking around the wrist to make the creature visible. Do you have it? Grab it! I got it, I got it! The other imp moved in and pushed Sina to the side, making her fall to the floor. The shadows faded in a cloud of dust and suddenly it felt eerily quiet. Are you okay? The victim asked Sina. Uh, are you? The others were already coming closer. Lachlan, ever the gentleman, helped Sina off the floor. I'm alright, just exhausted, and I feel violated. The lady clutched her arms together. Thank you for saving me. Can I? Can we help you in any way? Do you live nearby? While the woman answered, Zenith glanced. Uh, while the woman answered, Zenith glanced at her. She was unlike anything Zenith had ever seen. Her body was covered in silver-like fur, and her eyes. One of her eyes was brown, while the other had hues of blue and grey mixed together. I don't live in Tarlan. No, I was looking for an inn or a hostel. What were those things? I wonder what else they could do. I wish he didn't touch my wings. I understand what you mean by feeling violated. Zenith muttered softly, her wings tucked in tight. Tarlin doesn't have inns you want to use for respite. They're filled with drunkards. Since you feel violated by the imps, I recommend staying away from the inn. But if you'd be willing, you can grab... uh, You can grab a drink with us at my workshop in town. I'd appreciate that, she muttered, her arms still wrapped around herself. Zina started helping, picking up some of the things that had fallen from her bag. You are hurt, the woman said, pulling Zina to stand up straight. The fall had made a jagged tear into Zina's lower arm. Here, as a thanks. The woman held Zina's arm gently. A warmth spread through her veins and slowly the sides of her wings knit back together. Thank you. My name is Zenith, by the way. I'm Valentina. Delira silently helped put the items back in Valentina's bag. It's nothing. I can I can only do bits here and there, Valentina said, pulling back a little. It's okay. I really appreciate it, Zenith said with an open, friendly expression. Let's go to Aidas's workshop. After a silent nod from Valentina, they walked back towards the workshop. Thank you, Vixie, for still popping in. Yes. I hope... No, she can't really hear us, though. No, that's true. I read a little bit and I noticed you were reading when you didn't notice that it was locked. Yeah. (laughs) Tiny bit distracted, but that's okay. It's... It's... Mostly Valutina, that's the reason that I really wanted her to be here. It was uh, the character reveal. Um, hey, there's Ramdu. What's up, Ram? Hello. 
How are you doing, bud? Take care. He's looking at me being like, what the hell? What do you want? What, what, what do you think we want? We want content. I'm being distracted because it has a friend over. Heck! Yeah. <laughs> well, so do you. Yes. You're doing this with me. Yeah. Also, I don't think Sticker wants any. This is nope. not gum. I'm not going to force it. So. Sorry. Responsibly went to touch grass. Fair. Nah. Still irresponsibly touching grass. Sticker's too lazy. Well, Sticker's yeah. too thick by now. Both. Too thicker. Fair. But yeah, I'm not forcing him, so. No. He's fine right there. Oh, Fix, did you read a little? Did you yeah, did you, could you read a lot? I still don't think I don't know. Do I don't know what she's doing. Makes it a bit difficult. Anyone else who did actually get the chat catch the chapter? Uh, how did you think it was? How did you think it went? Yeah, I wonder who Valentina made. Mm. <laughs> who don't made know. Valentina? Whoever could it be? Something something difficult with names. <laughs> yeah. Chapter was bog. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad. There was one moment where you got the name wrong. I noticed. Yeah, I'm now kind of in the habit of correcting myself. You shouldn't. No, I mean, you said Zenith, where it should have been Ida. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not notice then. It's no problem. In, in any case, it worked fine, but it was kind of funny. It was like, oh, da -da 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 -da, Zenith. Wait, you said Zenith. Then where are you reading? <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Oops. Nah, it's fine. I mean, I've also been struggling with Ida's, which is Ida's. Proper pronunciation. It needs to be Ida's. Ida's. <laughs> Not Ida's. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Seven. No, not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not on the <laughs> We have seven main characters. Yes. I mean, seven, if you want a character. Yeah. All you have to do is help us make one next time. He's looking at me and I don't know what it means. <laughs> oh, I think I know what it means. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know what that means. Sounds like a dessert. <laughs> hey, you don't have to do anything with that character. No. Help us create one. And then we roll with it. That was almost bad. Oh boy. I almost pulled off one of the dangly bits on my... That's fine. It yeah. worked out. Nothing happened. It was a self-made bracelet. I know. Show them. I knew. I've seen it last week. It's, little it's really like pretty. Lava beads and one bluish golden one in the center. It's nice. And then two dangly bits to actually pull them together. I saw it last time you were here. You were wearing it then. Mm. She had just made it then. Right. I think. Okay. All right. Sayish, but okay. Yeah. But that's that's with uh, with story stream in general. It's like you can't just later pop in. No, it has to. Because then you miss stuff. Which is also why I post like four days in advance if I can. Yeah. Mark it on your calendar, folks. Mm, every three weeks. Mark it on a digital mm -hmm. calendar so you actually get it in like notification. notification. Yeah. Because object permanence is a thing and nobody remembers when something is. Yeah, and the corset is great. Seven's old corset. Yep. I was, uh, or I already assured that this corset will come back to this house. <laughs> Pretty often. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, where's this going? But yeah, no, that's fair. I forgot to put the other fan and I'm warm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have an interlude. True. Still want to do that? 
You won. Why are you also? Winning? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> Hello. It's in my calendar for a week. Uh, only three hours or less nights combined with constant planning, moving, and being busy because uh, my calendar uh, causes your calendar to become irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. It's no excuse. <laughs> no, I get you. It's difficult. Making plans is always a thing, you know. Well, let me then ask to when you've read or read, like listened to the story slash read the story. So let us know what you think. Because sometimes I ask people and they will get, be like, oh yeah, no, I, I've seen it. It was great. He doesn't know that. Nope. <laughs> Send us a message. Like, hey, I've watched your stream. It was fun. Or this could be better. It is still a um, working text. Yes. Right? This is an evolving thing. It will not be finished until we publish. Exactly. So with, with Halo as well, it was a... Uh, technically an unreviewed version of our story. What was that called? A proofreader? No. Oh, you mean a manuscript? Manuscript. manuscript. Sorry, so, I was also reading his me message and then you're, you basically became white noise for a second. I'm like, wait, what did you say? Well, I am white and I make a lot of noise, so that's <laughs> fair. I understand. <laughs> In this light, I'm not that white. I not am way more. <laughs> I was gonna say. This is ridiculous. I noticed that beforehand as well. I, I get shiny and I don't know why, because I'm not actually oily or anything. It's well, stupid. it's also because you have a light on your face directly. It is a surface that the light catches. So... Shine bright, but diamond. You do that, it's not that bad. <laughs> True. I know, Frog. I know. And otherwise, I'll ask. Still much appreciated that you're here to say that you couldn't be here on time. And you guys might hear noises from Seven, because he's working on his RC cars. Yes, he's also alive. He's also here. Doing things. We will. Absolutely. I'm very much trying not to butcher his lines for Ida's. Hmm, yes. And he's trying not to butcher uh, Lachlan for the frog. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not as easy as I initially thought with his voice. I have given it a little bit more chest voice. It's a little deeper now. I've tried to give it the same mysticism as you wanted him to be. And uh, it's still not easy. <laughs> not there. Right, it would be for the next story, honey, because this one is already way too far in. Well, now you do. But you're welcome to, that's for sure. Yes. That was still for the next story. Yeah. But that is a good question. It is, <laughs> confusion is very effective. It is your choice, that's a good answer. Brian. That is a very good answer. It's also the safest answer. And also an answer he has no use with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking others so so they can tell me it's my fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking you. I mean, he's technically not wrong. He's also. You know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that picked up. I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we both think that it would be cool. Yeah. Even if you aren't involved with <laughs> nice, even if you aren't involved with the um, uh, writing with the writing process or anything about your character, if you create a character, we can still uh, use it in our story, and it would actually help us out as well. So, actually, have yeah. almost half a can left still with the pineapple one. Good. I knew you had finished the other one, which is why I grabbed that one. Yep. Do you still need the shippy? You probably finished it already. Almost. Almost. <laughs> next, next pause. We'll grab it. Yeah. Shall we continue? 
was just about to say. <laughs> Speaking of pauses, yeah. is this one uh, over? I think so. Are we ready to continue? Let's let's go to the next show, yes. Christo. Christo, yes. Jam, jam. Jam. Jam and jelly. Chapter 5. Back at the workshop, Idas was rummaging through the boxes and crates while the other four were sitting at a lone table filled with parts. So you're an explorer, correct? Lachlan took a sip from his drink. Who, me? Yes, I travel all around the continent in search of races and species I haven't encountered yet. In both animals and other people? That seems a little invading. I only ask questions when they allow, and if they cannot speak, I'll observe what I can. Do you keep a journal of some kind? This seems like knowledge for a library somewhere. I'm actually writing my own book about them. A bestiary, if you will. A shy kind of pride crossed her features. Phenomenal. Lachlan's eyes got wider as he leaned back in his chair. Hey, uh, Valentina? I have a couple of these crystals with, uh, with your magic. Can you just charge these or is that too much? Idas jumped down the stairs three steps at a time. I can sure try. I don't use my magic on non-living items often. She got up from the table. Here you go. This is a base fire crystal, which means its natural state is the fire element. But if all the energy has been drained from it, it can be used for all kinds of things. Except the opposite of its original element, because that'll cause it to explode. Idas gave, it, uh, gave her the crystal and took half a step back. Valentina cradled the stone in both her hands and closed her eyes. Slowly, a small spark in the center of the rock started to shine. It became bigger gradually, until the stone shimmered softly. Valentina breathed out harshly. Maybe you should sit back down for a little bit, Zenith said, trying to guide Valentina to the chair. Eyes larger than ever before, Idas. Idas looked at the newly glow glow glowing crystal words. This is so cool. Imagine how useful this power could be. Imagine the potential. Immediately, she sprinted back up the stairs and started rummaging through boxes again. Oh, uh, thank you for the effort, she shouted from the floor above. Valentina dropped back into the chair. That's okay. I'm grateful you guys saved me. It's the least I could do. You know, being a lone traveler can be dangerous. There's strength in numbers, as they say. What do you think of traveling with us? You could observe all kinds of species. You help us, uh, help us out with your abilities. And so, we would keep each other safe. Malcolm placed his arms on, on the table. I, uh, I've always done it on my own. I'm really curious about the creatures that attacked me. Are, are all of you okay with me going along? Heck, yes! I'm sure we can help each other so well. I'd be happy for you to join. Leaving only the Lyra to answer. And if the rest are happy about it, I mean too. Let's rest up for the night. Decide tomorrow morning. We'll all head first. Reaffirming nods were exchanged. After a meal of mostly bread, Idas tried to give everyone special, uh, space to rest. Most of the surfaces were covered in parts of crystals. So, most of them ended up sleeping on the floor after all. But they were dry and warm. Idas promised as good, as good nights were exchanged to clean soon, so they could sleep more comfortably. The next morning, Zenith lay eyes wide open, on her spot on the floor. She had the urge to hum a song or sing a little, but she didn't want to wake her companions. A slow, deep sigh escaped her mouth as she fiddled with the hem of her shirt. With the morning sunlight shining through the wooden blinds on the window, a sliver of light fell onto Lachlan's eyes. He turned around to face away from the light. The last sunlight. Uh -huh. What? Valera sat up quickly. Nothing. It's okay. Well, I guess everyone woke up now. Great. No, I think Idas is still asleep. She was about to say Valentina might still be asleep when she saw the woman getting up as well. I think that a girl could sleep through a war. Wait, wait, fresh as daisy. Idas threw her arms in the air. All right, she lowered them again. Continued her. Uh, when she lowered them again, she continued her light snoring as if she was never awake. Did she just fall? Back to sleep instantly. He chuckled softly. I believe so. How enigmatic, Valentina pondered. She took out her notebook and started scribbling something. I dance. 
Hi, Dad. <laughs> uh huh? What's up, sea lady? I just, uh, said as she crawled out of bed. <laughs> I could already, uh, I could already hear some of your, some of your stomachs grumbling near the end of the night. Shouldn't you guys eat something? Certainly. A breakfast would be perfect. Yes, of course. But you guys realize this is a workshop, not an inn. We don't have anything in these pantries but spare parts. Well, nothing but besides gra- ground the coral beans. What's that? In some regions, they call it agonam. In others, it's coffee. Around here, it's pakuru. You brew the ground beans with boiling water and drink, uh, and make a drink that gives you energy. All my flasks have been filled with it. Ida has turned on a little heater uh, powered by a, ma- a fire crystal that measured some of the ground and measured some of the ground powder into a mug. <sighs> Breathe. Suddenly, it makes sense. Lachlan tried to hide a chuckle in a cough. I'd like to try it, if you don't mind, Azima said, looking at the actions Ida has performed. I could help with provisions. I don't have much on me, but I have some investments in Merit, so whenever we visit there, I can help more. I can help too, although I believe I might need to have these items appraised first, sell them for currency. From a pocket Zina that now believed was bottomless, he pulled three small gemstones. I, I can help by preparing things, but I don't have anything. Luckily, I don't really need anything either. I'm sure together we can make do with the money we got. I have some savings here as well. One thing is certain, we won't starve. Ida said determinantly, like she was rallying an army. Delira also nodded. She would help as well. Might I suggest that some of us go out for provision, while the rest stay here to help Ida with, uh, with whatever she needs help with? And perhaps after lunch, we could start our first hunt. Wonderful idea. Who wants to join me in getting provisions? Zenith looked between Ida's and Pelutina, torn uh, on who she wanted to help. I will help Ida's. If uh, if she'll allow me to clean up some spaces, then maybe we can make more comfortable beds. I'd like to join you for the time. Zenith looked at Ida's, ready to help her if she needed more people back at the workshop. I think Delira and I can make this place into more of a home base. I'll grab some money for you three. Zenith was happy Ida's had made the decision for her. She had wanted to help both sides. Ida's pressed the money purse into her hands. They promised to be back soon and went out to get the provisions. When Lachlan, Valentin, and Zenith came back to the workshop carrying several bags of provisions, they were astounded by the change Delira and Ida's had made. There were still parts on, every, on several surfaces, but they had made room in the little kitchenette, and they made a space for five people to sleep on. Did we stumble into the wrong place? Can't believe how tidy we got this place. We make such a good team, do. I just held up her hand for a high five. Do? No one's ever given me a nickname before. Ooh, I like it! Zina said, walking past the Lyra to put some of the bags in the kitchen. Don't you? I guess I don't know. The Lyra stammered as she walked into the kitchen, uh, walked to the kitchen counter to help Zenith unpack. Lachlan and Valentina also put their bags in the kitchen, and since there wasn't much space, they moved back to the table. We brought you brought some extra vegetables. I noticed you hadn't eaten any meat yet. Zenith said, smiling down at the Lyra, since she was a little bit taller. How did you make all this space anyway? It was mm-hmm. cluttered everywhere. Oh, we carefully stuffed it away. Whatever you do, don't open the attic hatch. I have nothing to hide, but if you don't want to be drowning in metal parts, that would hurt, you know? Both Lachlan and Valentina chuckled at that. Why do I have the feeling she knows how that feels a little too well? Delira whispered to Zenith, making the girl stifle a laugh. If we eat the fresh buns now from the bakery, we might be able to leave in a few minutes. We should really go looking for those imps. That's a good no, That's a good idea. The buns should still be warm. Lachlan agreed, grabbing one of the bags and putting it on the workbench. Ooh, warm bread! Always the best version of bread. Idas grabbed one of the buns and took a big bite. They're approved, she added with a mouthful and a smile on her face. They divided up the buns and everyone but Zenith accepted them. You don't want any? Valentina asked, who had offered it to her. Oh, I don't 
where we eat. Here we go again, Galera said, the ghost of a smile appearing on her face. But see, food is delicious. Ida smiled at her with this piece of bread against her cheek. I, I don't mind trying it, but if I don't need it, it, it seems like a waste. But you don't eat? Valentina asked again, still confused. Zenith shook her head. <laughs> Where do you get your energy from? Or your sustenance? You gotta eat something, right? No need to bother. I've been trying to have her eat something too. It's just no use. He leaned back into his chair. I mean, if it makes you guys more comfortable, I can eat. She was feeling a little self-conscious. You don't need to push you into doing something you don't want. It's something out of the ordinary, however. Not a needing to eat food. Well, all of my people don't need to eat or sleep, for that matter. But then, what are you? Uh, not meant in a bad way. Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say. I guess the question would always come up. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm, I'm an angel. Lachlan fell backwards out of his chair while Ida practically inhaled her breath and started coughing. An angel? Everyone asked in harmony. Open mouth, staring at Zenith. What? What did I say? Zenith gently rubbed Ida's back. Can I, can I grab you some water? <clears throat> I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Do you know how rare it is for an angel to show up anywhere? I, I must write about you. Can I please? Valentina begged with her best bestiary in hand. I, uh, we, we, we don't have the time now. We were going to hunt the imps. Zenith's face, face was turning red. Uh, also, my kin often visit lands. I, I didn't know they were rare here. Right. Yeah, imp, imp hunting. Time to start moving, ladies. Lockman jumped up. As most of the intention was taking off Zenith, she breathed out slowly. She didn't mind being vocal and bubbly, but she wasn't used to having so much attention on her. The last bites were taken and tools were grabbed before they left the workshop together. Aidas grabbed a bag of bread and followed the rest out the door, blocking the workshop behind them. Oh my god. Got through it. <laughs> <laughs> Words are hard today. Actually, they were hard in the rehearsal. I'm blaming oh, yeah. the chapters. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing. Like, our experience with writing goes up quicker than our experience with voice acting and reading out loud. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the the sentences are being more or written more difficult, I guess, more substantial. Yeah. Um, so reading them out loud is a lot more. Bleh. What do you mean, Vix? Oh, like that. I mean, in this case, she's a good writer. Oh, yes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Everything is in fine detail. It's also written by hand. Yes. So if your hand... <laughs> yep, that, I knew it. If your handwriting is terrible, hers isn't. It's good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. If, if anything, it's probably Ida's handwriting that is in illegible. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. She sounds like it, at least. <laughs> if you were to dart a pencil onto a piece of paper, it would probably make more words legible than Ida's would be able to write. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. But yeah, we kind of pulled that in. It wasn't really in the character, but it fit really well, so I figured that would be her. Shtick. Quest? Yep. Also, we kind of needed a reason yeah. for the character to come along. So. I think it fits really well for the character we've created. You know, behind the scenes, that is one of the hardest things to think of. Is you have your characters, you have your world, you have the the main characters planned out. Like, oh, we want this character to be, in, uh, be a main character, we have that character to be a main character. But they all meet at different points. Yeah. And why do they and stay? Why do they stay? 
Yeah. Why, why is it beneficial for the group to stay together? We so, saw that yeah. with, um, with uh, Theoden and Zerfer as well. Yeah. Where it made very little sense for them to stay because they were a two, two-man job. They, they kind of stuck together everywhere and they did their thing together. And, um, and then they helped with the directions. It's like, oh, I know where you go. But also you need someone to get in. And yeah. By the way, I'm an elf. And I can do that for you. Yeah. So they they kind of stuck around because they traveled the same way, and because of that, they became friends good enough to actually stay. join and stay. Yeah. It kind of just moved that way, which worked really well. Yeah. And for for Valentina, it's uh, it's the same kind of thing. Is um. She has her bestiary. She wants to travel the world to see every creature she can. Since they're traveling anyway, she might as well be safer in numbers. Exactly. So that was a good reason to have her come along. And what is her purpose in life? What is her purpose in her travels and in her job, basically? Yeah, I don't know when you came in. I don't know if you actually heard why what happened when she came in in the first chapter. You didn't miss much, no. I gotta say. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous warm here too. Oh yeah. It is very warm. I'm glad I put the fan. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't feel much of it. Really? I do. Well yeah, I have long pants and a corset on. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so um, I don't feel much of it, but when I feel the, the fan coming all, uh, across my arms and, so, and stuff, that's so nice. Yes. Well, since chat is a little slow, should we just do the rest of the chapter? I think we're ready. I think we can. Only the last chapter after a bit. Now, if you only missed half the first chapter, then that's fine. If you missed the entire first chapter, it's a little bit of a shame then I would recommend still watching it back. Oh yeah. Because that's where she got introduced. Yeah, you would wanna go through the first chapter. Yeah. And the bit that you missed. I don't think you missed enough to not understand what's going on or how yeah. people got where. It's kind of a kind of a good thing that the first chapter of this was kind of a slower one. Yeah. A little bit of a recap, but... It's my voice. There's no voice. It's my voice. It's that my is voice. a voice. I'm glad you like it. I li yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you like my voice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is also a compliment, yes. <laughs> but hey, if that's the voice you chose, then... Vixie is okay with it. So, yeah. that's good. I'm going to ask Momo for the one that I made for her. I think she's going to like it. I think so, too. It should be fine. It'll be fine. Sure, of course. In any way, we'll be fine. And if she's <laughs> not okay with it, then you still can't do it because it's now your character anyway. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, well, that's a shame then. I'm still going to use it. That's true. Also, we don't really have any other options. No. <laughs> There's I'm, only so many in I'm this talk box. Out. I'm running out of voices. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I could go for the very annoying Kai Maisley one that I did no. for Maka. <laughs> no. Please, no. <laughs> not for that character. It doesn't fit for that character. No, not at all. Thank you. So far, I think the, the characters that you've voiced, I think all of them were fitting. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, right, if you have a reason to sound this way, then it's convincing. Yeah. If if the voice sucks, then the character probably also sucks. <laughs> like the voice for Baal sucked. Well, it it, it it it's very low grumbly. It's not bad on my throat because I know where it is and where it's supposed to be. But it is a bad voice, and the character was also bad, so it fit. Yeah. There was a purpose behind that terrible noise that he made. Um, uh, if you're 
uh, if you're confident with your voices, then you'll be able to deliver them correctly. Yeah. Convincingly. It's stupid. I actually feel like I'm doing your, your voices better now than I would have done before when you asked me to do the line to test it out. Oh, yeah. But now it's in context. Yeah. That is different. It did also help to go like, hey, you're annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also true. And thanks, Justin, for a character voice. I mean, you've already sent him the file for the voice of his... Yes, w uh, which character? I'm assuming he means his character. Well, that's for a character, so I don't know. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. What's your What's your suggestion? I think he may mean like a different story though, because oh. it also says for a character. Or voice. That's what the slash would mean here. Or. So it's uh, and or. Make a character that appears in the story that uses monitors. Uh, I'ma whoop your ass! Technically any voice. Could be a mom voice. Could be a mom voice. Cause you know. Any voice. Any female can be. Anyone with a womb. Yes. Can be a mom. Exactly. I mean, anyone can be a mom. Yes. I could be a mom. Yes. Probably. If I wanted to. True. I don't, but I could be. So my voice is still a mom voice. I mean, in this case, I also don't think you really want to be a dad all that much. No. So. Um, not surprised to make that suggest. Yeah, no, me neither. But no. also, I didn't see it coming. I kind of want to bonk the boy. I. I was hoping. <laughs> I had hope for something serious. Yeah, I had hopes, and then they were. Smashed. And then I and then I realized it was Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of, of course. I mean. You've made it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we continue? Let's. Let's. Jim. Uh, Jim. It will Jim. be Jim now. Bro. Jim. Shen. <laughs> Shen. <Shem>, Jim. <laughs> Chapter 6. Led by Lachlan, heading due north, the group went back to where they found Valentina. The ground was still disturbed and they fanned out a little to see if they could find any signs of where the imps may have went. I can see footprints here. Idas pointed at the ground. Yeah, um, those are mine. I'm starting to think that when they are shadows, they don't leave footprints. Here, the markers on this road out of town are destroyed. I think they went this way. The lyre called out from a little distance. We are likely better off searching for the path of destruction and footprints. A broken sign wouldn't, uh, wouldn't disappear with a gust of wind. Lachlan walked over to where Valera calls him. The others followed, and so they started walking down the road out of town. I in the red. Yes, I noticed. But it's also the question. Yeah. Um, your internet is pretty flexible. Could it be because of that? It could be. But it's still good enough. It's three something frame rate percent, four something frame rate percent. No, that's four dropped frames. Yeah, that's my fault. My internet is bad. Are you bad? bad. Are you downloading something? Can you check? Because yours takes precedence. And I don't. I've done something today that was around 12. Yeah, it's not current. Oh, that's weird. Well, let's just continue. They should still be able to hear it, right? Is it audible? Let's wait for that answer as well. Yes, I just checked that. Yep. Now it's green. Yeah, but it shoots from 300 to 10,000 and then back to 400, so. If anything, it's unstable. Yeah. 
It's fine right now. Yeah, that doesn't really help. Those yeah, ones. but was it audible even though it was lagging? Yeah, I know. Seems fine for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's just continue. It should it should be fine. It might be both, Dragon Ball. Yeah. This is also a slight behind the scenes thingy. That's why I record my stuff instead of downloading it after the broadcast is done. Yeah, but if when I did record it would blow up my entire computer. Yeah, no, that doesn't work for you, but <laughs> for me it does. Yeah, the laptop works. It's it's gonna be fine. Yep. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. The others followed, and so they started wa uh, walking down the road out of town. How far will they look today? Uh, they could be long gone. I I don't know how fast they tend to travel. Let's scout the area as far as we can while still making it back before dusk settles. Miles of agreement were shared, and so the first search began. As they followed the road, everywhere they passed where imps could, be, could hide, they would investigate. It wasn't until late in the afternoon, followed a string, uh, following a string of broken road markers, that they stumbled upon a farm. Crashing and a scream were heard from the inside the structure. Quickly now, we have to help them. Walkman sprinted forward. Zenith was right on his tail when he threw open the door and they both looked around. The house was trashed. Items, books, papers, everything was scattered around. Another muffled scream was heard from above them. They crashed into the first steps up in unison and found one imp picking and plucking at a woman, while the man lay face down on the floor. Try to help them out. I'll distract the beast. Lachlan grabbed his flute and started playing a melody that instantly captivated the creature. It jumped to the floor, snarling and crawling toward the Lachlan. The Lyra came in third, rushing over to the woman when she saw the state she was in. Zenith looked, checked over the man. He was still breathing, but he had a large bruise forming and some smaller wounds on his head. She shook him gently, but he was knocked out. The woman buried herself in the, into Delira's arms, which Zenith could see made, made her uncomfortable. Ma'am, would you come with me? It's not safe here, she offered, knowing she couldn't help the man on the ground. Ida's short legs didn't carry her as fast as the others could run. When she uh, ran into the house, she started rummaging through her bag for the stone. Valentina fl flew up the stairs to observe as much as she could before the imp would be gone again. There you are. Uh, Ida said to the rock in her hand. The imp was still focused on Lachlan, who was slowly backing out of the room, still playing his melody. When he ended up at the uh, stairs, he went as far back as he could. When he was right on the edge, the imp suddenly jumped up, startling Lachlan. Ida, who was on her way up the stairs, pointed the stone at the beast, and, as usual, a vortex appeared. She caught the imp within the stone and caught Lachlan in her, in her arms which sent both of them down the stairs immediately. At the loud crash down the stairs, the woman leaped out of Delira's arm, right into Zenith's open arms. It's going to be okay. We're here to help, she said, soothing the woman. Delira shot Zenith a grateful look and went down to check on the others. Did you get it? Zenith asked the others while gently rubbing the woman's shoulder. Lachlan stood up as, uh, as soon as he could, realizing he fell on top of Ida's. Are you okay? Sputtering for air, Ida is curled into a ball on the floor. I got it. I'm just gonna lay here for a bit. That was incredible, Valentina said excitedly, not realizing Ida's position. Zenith and the woman slowly walked out of the room, looking out of, from the landing down the stairs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, the woman kept chanting. Valentina, is there any chance you can help the man in that room a little? Uh, having him off the floor would help, right? I, I can do that. Delira reached the bottom of, uh, of the stairs and kneeled down next to Ida's. Can I help? Actually, I meant if you could heal his concussion. I'd rather not have the lady be alone when we leave. A healing, yeah. Right, I, I can do that, right. A lot was happening. She scratched the back of her neck, and with a little wink, she went into the room. <sighs> can, can you help me up? I might be a better off sitting, Ida's whispered under a heavy breathing. So, something is seriously not in the right spot. It was quite the fall. Thank you ever so much for catching, sacrificing yourself. Lachlan helped the Lyra slowly move Ida's into a sitting position. Ah, uh, don't worry, don't worry about it. 
That's what friends are for. To have each other's backs. Friends. Yeah. Of course. Zenith took the lady back to her husband, and she could hear him coming too in the other room. Valentina, I think something's wrong with Ida's. I hate to put so much pressure on your healing ability, but could you go check? I'll stay here with them. Are you sure? I'm not done healing this person yet, but I can check on her. She stood up and made her way down the stairs at a moderate pace. Ida's had been moved to sit against the wall, her arms clasped around her torso, still inhaling and exhaling sharply. Can you remove the jacket, or can we do it for you? Otherwise, I can't reach your ribcage with my magic. Valentina put her hands gently on Ida's shoulders. She nodded slowly in agreement. Lachlan pulled her away from the wall, so Valentina and Delira helped remove the jacket, leaving her in an oil-stained tank top. Delira propped herself in front of Ida, supporting her by holding her shoulders. Valentina gently laid her hands on Ida's back first, her labored breathing quickly uh, calmed down as Valentina's dim glowing fingers glided along Ida's slim frame. When her breathing became more and more normal, her body began to slump even more forward. A pained inhale shocked her body upright again. I can't. Uh, I believe I found what's wrong. One of her ribs is slightly dislodged, and Valentina's hands stopped moving. Can you help her? I can't say it'll be painless, but yes, I can fix it. But please, f fix me. Don't worry, hon. I will. Brace yourself. Valentina's hands started emitting more light. When the glow started hurting their eyes, she pushed into Aida's back with full force. Aida's jumped forward into the Lyra's arms, and Valentina was caught by Lachlan as she fell to the sun. I... I can breathe again. I'm not hurt anymore. Aida's pulled herself away from the lyra. I'm sorry about that. I didn't have any other direction to go. It's okay. I'm glad you feel better. The lyra straightened her scarf. She slowly got up to her feet, and as Lachlan offered his hand to help Valentina to her feet, the lyra offered Ida to hers. Meanwhile, uh, in the second floor room, Zenith had calmed the couple enough to have a normal conversation. We have the imp captured. It, it won't come back. Zenith promised again and again. Where did it come from? Why would it attack you suddenly? We've done nothing wrong. We don't know why it attacks, but it's gone now. Please, please don't worry. Can I get either of you something? I think you should check on your friends, though. You'll have a word, uh, you have a word look on your eyes. We'll be right down to meet you. The lady saw Zenith off with a heartwarming smile. Valentina seemed to have found stable footing only to almost be knocked over by a hug from Ida's. Thank you, V. You've healed me from a lot of pain. Zenith came down the stairs and automatically looked over all of them, to make sure they were all right. Not long after Zenith joined her friends did the couple come down the stairs as well. The man was scowling at his wife, and pulled an even more annoyed fist for mess in the house. The wife walked right up to Zenith and Delira, who stood together. We wanted to thank you all for your help. The lady said with a pointed look at her husband. It isn't much, but I think you deserve it. The woman was carrying a, a lightly pulsing crystal. She laid it in Zina's hand. Zina's eyes went to Ida's, unsure what she was holding. Are you sure? Yes, we don't have any use for it anymore. Take it, please. Ida's nodded and almost immediately the woman started shuffling them out the door. I need to get to clean. Thank you so much. A little baffled, the group went on their way back to the village. On the way back, Ida pulled the crystal from her pouch and started investigating. She went over the most translucent, uh, mostly translucent object with a little hand scanner that softly peeped along. I can't wait to use more tools on this. It could be incredibly valuable in the right hands. Ida peered at the little screen on the scanner in her hand. You never explained what kind of crystal that is. I don't think I've ever seen one like that before, either. It feels somewhat warm, but it's not your typical fire element crystal. It must be something else. We won't know until the scanner is done, and even then it could be non-conclusive. How many types of crystals are there? So far I've come across eight, all used to different machinery. But I'm sure there's other, uh, other uses than in machinery, and then maybe different elements as well. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure we will. There are plenty of imps to hunt. Who knows how far they spread out? 
They continued their conversation until they walked into town. Ida just unlocked the door of the shop and flicked, the li uh, flicked on the light switch. What? What happened here? We could have ransacked this place in broad daylight. Lachlan placed a hand on Ida's shoulder. The silence fell among the group. No one had a clear answer. Silently, they all started helping Ida to pick up the scattered items and broken things. Chapter That's it, guys. There you go. There you go. That's three. How did y'all enjoy it? Worked a hard today, man. Same for chapter two, because I actually didn't ask about chapter two. That's fine. Fog. Good. Fantastic. Yes. It's good. Yeah. I like it. I like these. It's been a while since we wrote them. Yet, oh, yeah. Yet again. That happens often, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I think this was... February or something. Probably. Either February or beginning of March. So, it's been uh, five or six months. It's fair. <laughs> I did just realize, uh, as we started the chapter, that we... Um, Normally, when we stream, Seven is out with his RC cars. Mm -hmm. So his computer being on might already be a reason why my internet is less. Instant. That may be, yeah. But I don't know. It's internet. It's internet. Internet's wonky anyway. It's better than yours. <laughs> Any internet's better than mine. <sighs> Sad. Yeah. Shit sucks, dude. Yeah. I'm glad you guys like it. Yeah. I hope the others will have as well. Most likely. Please do let us know when you see this. If you've seen all of it, let us know what you think. Yes. Enlighten us. Send it in the Discord. Yes. Or to us specifically, but either way. You still like the voice I do for Idas? Yeah. Idas. As long as you say your name right, I think the voice is fine. <laughs> there were less than in the rehearsal, but there were oh, yeah. still a few. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. If you've done a, vo a name in your head in a certain way for so long, it's really difficult to transition to the correct version of that voice. Or the name. Yeah. The word. If you have a name in your head that you've read out loud in your mind while writing it it's so difficult to then transition to yeah. oh it's a different name i guess yes yeah, so there's emphasis on the first syllable it's it's difficult because i have the syllables correct but i have the um inflection wrong i i tend to do i dash which yes, the pulls up at the check mark instead of yeah. It's exactly. a check mark shape instead of a. It needs to be the other way around. I will get there eventually. Oh yeah, I mean she's bad with words. Why can't I be? <laughs> Mech magic no magic chemical engineer. She's great with words. <laughs> Making them all one go. <laughs> You're making them up. Yeah, she's great with words. So are we. We make up words <laughs> on the spot. Can't wait to see what Holly has done for my character for toys, but I'll have to be patient for a little bit. Yeah. I don't actually know how much patience. I don't remember. I don't remember either. And I don't think I explained what the voice was going to be to you either. I explained what... I, I remember the... him sending me a voice yeah. note. Yeah. And I, I remember us talking about it literally last Wednesday. Yes. You uh, did a little bit of the voice, but I don't know if you actually voiced it or just explained it. I explained what the uh, inspiration was, mm. but I don't think I'm going to use that fully. Fair. I'm going to make my own spin on it, um, but I am going to use that ins as inspiration. Because that's the way uh, they speak, so. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know when he comes in. I don't remember. I think he might be next. I'm not sure. 
No. 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 But it is the next person to come in. Yes. I'm gonna take a shower and die. And then <laughs> <laughs> now don't die. Oh, hold up. <laughs> Do this in a different order. No, just take, one. Hold and up. Three. Like, so take the shower. Rewatch the thing, DM us the feedback, live your life, then die. <laughs> yeah, just do part one and part three. And then wait with the, la- the other one until like all the way at the end of your life. Yeah, just skip number two, that's fine. It'll be fine. It's gonna be very hard to watch it back when you're a ghost. Yes. Choose one that hasn't been chosen. Shower. <laughs> Rewatch, send feedback, <laughs> die. <laughs> send it back to the owner's hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hand it to someone else. That's called murder. Yeah. Probably also not a best. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thank you, Seven, for that insight. Yep. Much needed insights. Anyway. It has come to my attention that it's uh, someone's birthday. Yes. So uh, we're going to raid him, even though you, pro- you guys are probably already in the stream, but I don't care. So I'm going to raid him anyway. Yep. Um, send him a very big happy birthday. So will we. So will we. So in advance, uh, I know he's not here, but he's likely going to rewatch it as well. Um, happy birthday, Mr. Nightdream. Yes. Very it's happy uh, fantastic to Have know you. Finally met you. Yes. It was great. It's a blessing to know you. Yes. So. I hope you watch it back. Let's go raid. Yes. Yes. Cool. He is rated for mature audiences. Oh my. Yes, because he uses swear words. That's fair. So we do read sometimes. And with that. Thank you so much for watching. And we hope you enjoyed as much as we did. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.